In this video, we will explain multiple unexplained attributes about the cup, such as geology, the atmosphere, water, wind, and more. Starting with the geology. The ground itself is primarily made of three things, being heavily compressed dust, sugar, and iron and or iron oxide. The dust layer acts as dirt or soil, providing a place for plants to easily take root. This dust over the years has been compressed by gravity and rain and is inedible by Fischeridae. The sugar layer acts as stone or bedrock, a place where only select plants can grow. Under the sugar are highly compressed pockets of CO2 from the previously carbonated soda. The iron is exploitable by both plants and animals, seen most predominantly in Prustrum urbum. But the ground is also made up of many other elements such as nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, and many other non-metals. There is another major composite of the ground being the cup walls themselves. The cup walls are an indestructible and unreachable phenomenon to the plants and animals inside. The walls of the cup are confusing for the fact that the plants and animals can travel up and down the walls without any changes in gravity, meaning the bottom of the cup has gravity pulling down the same as Earth's, but the walls have gravity pulling towards the walls, making it feel no different from the floor. Thanks to the cup's shape, there are corners between the floors and the walls that otherwise would be sharp, but thanks to the geography, the change is so gradual that it's almost impossible to tell whether you're walking on the floor or walking on the walls. Also thanks to the cup shape, there is a tiny place going down the center of the cup, not reaching the bottom but going past the top. This place is the exact location where you can be instead of moving from one gravitational force to the other gradually, you are forcefully being pulled in every direction at the same time. Although this is so high in the air for plants and animals that no current or future descendants will ever be able to reach this location naturally. The climate of the cup is mostly warm, the bottom of the cup is the hottest location and only the strongest of plants and animals can survive here, but the top of the cup is the opposite with frigid temperatures and even snow. Now for the atmosphere. The atmosphere is similar to Earth's, the biggest difference is the high amount of helium. This seems to be here by chance. The wind is generated thanks to the gravity change from the walls to the floor. Dying winds end up in the corner of the cup and flung to the floor, and then carried to the other walls gaining momentum producing wind. How an object can end up inside the cup is by getting past the atmosphere. Most objects end up burning up in the atmosphere before getting halfway to the ground. But some are either strong enough or big enough to where they can land on the ground in the form of either new ground dust or edible dust. Water is extremely rare. In its place are pools, lakes, and rivers of soda, to be more specific, Coca-Cola. The only place where you can find water reliably is the top of the cup in the form of snow. When the coke comes in contact with water, it seems to, instead of diluting, completely changes the water into more coke, adding another anomalous feature to this cup. But the North can have snow and not Coca-Cola slushy because all of the soda is frozen and can't react with the water. Rain acts the same here as it does on Earth, evaporating then clumping up then falling back to the ground. As a size comparison, one Titanus Chymex compared to the bottom of the cup is a similar size comparison between one human and the entire United States. There are two metals found on Earth that are not found in the cup at all, being nickel and lead. There aren't any natural disasters inside the cup except for flooding. That's all for today.